nine Pearl Street. Um, oh wait, you, you have to officially vote on the amendment um, request for 60 C on the street. Oh, to withdraw? <laughs> yeah, so what happened, so if I can explain quickly, so the um, applicant submitted a request for um, an amendment um, after you all sort of informally looked at the changes at the last meeting. And then we had already sent notice out to the newspaper and the editor. So that means it couldn't just, they, we couldn't just file it away. So you all have to take official action to accept the request for withdrawal. And you could do that with prejudice or without. Um, I would recommend without prejudice, which means they could come back in two years. Um, but they're already under construction. So. Um, so um, we would need, um, you know, formal opening and then accepting and then a vote on the acceptance of that request for withdrawal. Okay. So the um, the what was going to be presented was an amendment to the approved plans by Sip Jelly at 60 C Masonic Street, Northampton Map ID 31D-122. The applicant has requested withdrawal without hearing. Can I get a motion to approve this with Brian? I actually have a question. So does it go back to the original solution? Whatever was approved. So the, whatever you, the, what you approved um, would remain except for that minor amendment that you approved for the elevator tower mm -hmm. to be so that, that has to stay. Yeah. No, well, you approved that to go taller. Mm -hmm. But everything else are, yeah. stays the yeah, same. Yeah, everything else stays the same. Oh, great, great. Okay. okay. So moved. Uh, can I get a second? All in favor? Any opposed? Okay. I'll just abstain because I recuse myself from that. Okay. okay. Now, can we move on to yep. the next item, which is um, reviewing some minor revisions to 9 uh, uh, Pearl Street. Could you introduce yourself then? Yeah, uh, my name is Dan Bonham. I work for Tom Douglas, and I'm here representing Culvin Realty, which owns Nine Pearl Street. Uh, formerly the Gleason's Camping Store, which I'm sure many of you are familiar with uh, in this stand. Um, so, uh, see, I'm before you folks, um, June 26th, to review facade repairs. Uh, along um, Pearl Street. Um, there's generally two forms to the building. One is a, a long, kind of lower um, warehouse type building, and then there's a taller, kind of gable building. Uh, two forms that come together. These two are the facade, which we're not reviewing, but they're on the back side on what's called Railroad Ave. Um, so there were a number of uh, facade improvements that were approved. Um, and I have the elevations to show, but uh, you know the the existing all the existing wood on this brick building was basically hadn't been um, the existing wood what wood um, features of the facade anything that wasn't brick had been basically left to rot for the past mm -hmm. you know it's shot <laughs> seventy five years or more mm -hmm. uh, and a lot of water dripping down the facade. Um, and a lot of deferred maintenance on the roof itself. So there was water leaking actually into the parapet here along the top of the parapet wall. Um, after we got done repairing the wall in the back, um, which there was one 40 foot section of wall we actually had to replace um, kind of around the corner from here. Um, that's not really under your purview, but after we finished that, then we got to the streetscape uh, street side and repairing the roof and the, the parapet here realized it was completely shot um, and basically the, the mason is up there you know, pulling bricks off by hand without any uh, work so uh, we met uh, with the engineer with the builder and with the building owners and um, what we're proposing and, um, is under construction Currently, we find it to be a pretty minor difference is to, rather than having a stepped parapet, um, which left some areas that were um, 20 inches or more above the, well, actually, 
above the roof line it was about three feet in some areas and it's only a, a two wide brick in that location so what we did was we poured a consistent beam across the entire wall to hold the, the entire wall together because it's it's uh, a pretty soft brick up there so we really wanted to bind the whole thing together and put a new coping cap on that and you can see if you look closely this kind of dashed line here was the, is the original um, parapet and we have now just a consistent um, line across the top so that's one of the changes the other change is um, these old uh, barn doors up here um, well that, that's a very large opening at the peak of a gable roof with uh, about eight courses of brick coming up to a peak at the top and there's it's structurally absurd frankly as it stands right now and so what we're proposing we, we need to replace the entire top of the gable end here so what we're proposing is actually to infill it with masonry uh, all the way up and set that masonry back so you still from the street will read the shadow lines the sill will still be there the peak will still be there but we don't want to put any wood back up there that would be difficult to access and um, require structurally it's much better to, to make it all brick according to the, the engineer um, and the whole facade is being painted white so it's all one uniform color um, and the brick would match you know in terms of the scale and everything would just be stepped back um, so you have two issues Am I allowed to speak to this? I have one more issue. Oh, sorry. 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 Yeah. Um, so the tenant on the first floor uh, is a brewery, and the plan was to put their condenser for some of their brewing equipment in the back of the building uh, on, on the ground. And it turns out, kind of late in the game, they discovered that there was no, uh, there's no clearance around it for it to operate or to be maintained. Um, and so, what we've done is put it on the roof and we set it back as far from the edge as we could um, there is we need to get it directly above some structure because it's about a 700 pound unit um, let's see how fast does it crash um, I guess I'll just hold this um, so here it is in plan it's Step back here, it's about 10 foot six from the edge. Um, it's 47 inches tall, so it is about this tall. Um, and the, the original plan was for it to go on the ground, basically right there. Um, and so what I've done here, I took a walking tour. I, I tried to take pictures, but you can't really see it because the scaffolding's still up. Um, you can see about the top half of it from these areas that I've highlighted here. Um, so this is Pearl Street coming around here. And this is Pleasant Street here. That's the unit on top there. And so you can, when there's no leaves on the trees, you can see the top of it from these areas, um, just set back from, from the edge of the building. Um, as I said, with the scaffolding still there, and with the trees just recently losing their leaves, it's, uh, I wouldn't say it's obvious now, but it's become obvious that you can see it from the street. And I know that's something that um, central business tries to avoid. What about from the, from like the deck or, or you know, from Union Station? Yeah, uh, well, that's not a public street back there. Okay. So my understanding, based on conversation with one five is that side of the facade is not, up for discussion. What's the color of the unit? It's a uh, light gray, like a primer gray. So it's painted as opposed to a natural metal? Yeah. What is the function of this tank? Is it the storage? It's a condensing unit for the uh, walk-in cooler, which is um, 16 by 24, a rather large walk-in cooler. Mm -hmm. It's already installed. It's on the roof. Yes. And it's 10 feet from the edge, the roof edge? Yep. 10 foot 6. Uh, is there going to be a required? You have to have access to maintain that equipment? 
Um, yeah, they have access uh, from the roof. There's a roof hatch in, in, over in an area that we're not renovating. Will, will the building department require fencing on the roof? They have not because of the distance from the edge. Because it's over 10 feet. Yeah, I think four feet or six feet was the distance. 10 feet is the requirement. Uh -huh. So you just squeak it in at 10 feet. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so currently I don't have a proposal for, for shielding of this, um, really because of the scaffolding and because of the, um, the leaves on the trees, we haven't been able to see it until just the last week or so. Um, so when I originally submitted for this amendment, it was not as obvious uh, that it would be visible. That being said, I think it's, it's um, doesn't stand out. That really blends into the background. Well, that was my concern. What if it was you know, shiny stainless steel or something like that, as opposed to a, a gray? Yeah, it's like a flat gray. It does have like a fan mm -hmm. uh, guard across the top. That's. Um, uh, and I'm sure that standing on the street looking up you're not going to see it yeah you can barely see it from this area here yeah. uh, you have to get about 80 feet away from the building right. to be able to really see it that's about the width of the street here. so and then the way that the road curves around here mm -hmm. you can't see it from it you know in this area back here so that's that's the kind of new piece uh, this piece is under construction currently. Um, and before we put the top cap on it and kind of finish the roof, we want to make sure you're okay with that. This work's probably going to happen in the spring, but of course we wanted to make sure that that was in line with you know what the committee would like to see. So the, the cornice detail. Originally it's a stepped cornice. Yeah. Was it built down? The cornice yeah. detail? Yeah. Are you replacing that? that? Yeah, we're going to replace it in kind. There's actually a number of bricks. This this whole area needs quite a bit of repair. Yeah, I'm talking about the long part of the building. Oh, and here no, to the there was nothing to it. Straight yeah. up to yeah. to metal flashing and a drip edge. It was straight up. Yeah. No no step out. No articulation right. whatsoever. But it's the it did step horizontal step down. Yes. Like, frankly, I think it makes the building look really boring doing that. I don't understand why you could have just poured that in three sections and kept that stepping. Well, we wanted the roof slopes in this direction, actually. Yeah. So we just wanted to avoid any, you know, there's some slenderness ratios for parapets and bracing and tying back into the building. Um, and so we just wanted to avoid that. So is that whole wall raised to the highest set, the highest elevation? You said the roof pitches behind it. Yep. It's like the center. So, so obviously. Does the beam you, pitch as well? Is the beam following the pitch? The top of, yes. And the top of wall pitches to follow the roof pitch. So, oh, right. so I don't see that with that. So it yeah. all pitches this way. Yeah. Frankly, I want to be honest, I'm really opposed to that. I don't like the idea of that sloped cornice. Uh -huh. I mean, I think it takes away from a lot of the historic look of the building. You wouldn't have seen that. And I'm kind of. I, I think you guys got ahead of us here in terms of coming to us. I'm sorry about construction. Like you. I'm sorry, Joe. Yeah. No, I said you kind of got ahead of us. You went ahead with the construction and made that decision before discussing it with the committee. Yeah, I, I hear what you're saying. I, I respect that. Um, these were emergency repairs that, that were being made during construction. Well, so let's be frank. That's an emergency if the building's been sitting like that for 80 years. <laughs> you know? I mean, you, you um, I'm just, frankly, I don't like the look of that. I think it's a cheap solution, you know. I've worked on a lot of buildings on Main Street, but the cornices are literally like that. You, you could pick the whole cornice off. There's no mortar left, and we rebuilt them, mm -hmm. you know. And for you to go ahead with that step to do that, I, I well, just think it's uncalled for. You know? Yeah, so, and I appreciate that. So actually what we're doing is we're, we're, we are building up a wood coping above that. A very short parapet um, ends up being um, four two bys stacked on. So we could flatten that out and have it step like it was originally. 
And then that would be wrapped with like a, a copper or some sort of flash? Yeah. Get the flash yeah, typical, you know, mm -hmm. top of wall coping, yeah. That Painted would, white to match the rest of the building. That would bring back the set character. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I, that's, you know, that's, it gets uh, boring with that slope. Yeah. You know, it looks like a cheap roof where, you know, the original articulation you know, has some detail to it and a little more interest, you know. And it brings up the massing. I mean, there's right. definitely yeah. tree bays there, which you lose that sense once you've lost the step in the roof. Hmm. If it's not too hard to build it up with. I respectfully disagree, but, it, you know, ultimately we want to please appease the committee, so we would be happy you to. You disagree that there are three bays there? No, I disagree that it, it enhances the building. Hmm. Oh. But I, it's a coping detail. It, it, it's probably it, it's not a particularly strong feature of the building overall. I think there's a lot more character in the windows and some of the brickwork, and uh, you know some of this stuff down here that we're doing, and the way that the, the building hugs up tight to the street and then steps back here for this entrance. Uh, and the portal in here at the top. So I, I thought when you when, when you see um, that's always in the city council chambers. And downstairs. Um, first floor. Yeah. Thank you. The other building. Uh, well, when you were initially talking about this, there was going to be something like preventative for like ice damming or something like that. That's what I thought it was going to be about. So that's I I I agree to the extent of, of the the character for sure. That is that is definitely a lot less appealing um, in the looks of it from now. But it's it, it just seems. Yeah, it, it seems like it's something that would be done today, not, not in the past, so that's just my opinion as well. Well, just look, looking at it with the step detailing, uh, obviously the original designer, that it was sort of a nice trick so to accommodate yeah. City you know, Chambers. A, a, a regular uh, roof line with a sloped actual roof. Mm -hmm. And I think that from a design point of view, Whoever designed it followed the, the three parts of the building, and so it, it just breaks it down a little bit. It, it's almost like it's three separate structures, but it gives you that sense of transition. And to me, I, I think that uh, you know, th that can be done, uh, you know, even if you do a little false front work or whatever, but to capture that, I, I think that would be lost. And I agree that uh, down below, it just looks like there's something missing. There's something should be there, but it's not. It should be another story. It should be a roof pitch going back, or the steps that they have there right now. So uh, I, I sort of agree with you guys that that um, would make it look better. Okay, we'd be happy to replace it in kind. That's not a problem. That's what I like to hear. Right. Um, let's go to the other. Two items, and then we can make a motion on all three, or should we do it one at a time? Uh, I think we should do it individually. Three separate motions for each each edition. Okay. Um, does someone want to make a motion on the parapet um, detailing? No. I just wanted to ask a question: Is that just going to be flat, or is it going to it, it is it going to mimic the you know the the detailing of, of the original door um, door that was up there with the with the pain look? Well, yeah, the, the plan, so from a structural standpoint, it's much better to just infill it completely with brick, right? Yeah. Um, because of the nature of the building code, there's a 5% additive or subtractive in either direction, how much capacity you can take or add from the building without having to reassess the entire building. So um, in talking with the, the, the engineer, he thought infilling that with brick was the best way to go. Um, and the owners would not like to replace it with another wood, kind of fake wood panel there. Um, so our, our strategy was to recess that, to step it back in. Why not recess it back in with a masonry pranic and then just put a mimic of that up there and it could be done in a PVC material to mimic yeah. what would be painted. Right, yeah, we could mimic this exactly that's not what the owners wanted to do. So that's why I was just questioning. They didn't want to have to have something to maintain. Was that a, an access point for a uh, pulley system? That's what we think. Yeah, yeah. there's apparently no storage up there. Uh, yeah. The lower level or the middle level was uh, horse space, 
Okay, well, this so, probably where they pulled the hay out yeah. and stored the hay in the upper story. Yeah. So you really would have like barn doors opening mm -hmm. uh, and then the arms sticking out there with the hooks on it and up and down. That would go. Would be a nice feature, good place to hang a sign that says brewery. <laughs> I, I don't recall the gable part of the building. Is that still natural brick, or is it painted brick? It's painted. Okay. Yeah. yeah the other side. So you know, Railroad Street side does not have that, and it's it's the natural brick. It's right? natural brick. Yeah. Uh, Circular. I think this is a nice detail. Yeah, it is. Um, so, in terms of, yeah. So, on this deep, well, it's you know, I know these are just drawings, but and I don't know, is there a good photograph? It's hard to see that right there. But um, is this? Can you just tell me this? Border here is that raised brick or is that a wood jam that we're wood jam? Yeah, that's a wood jam. So the, so the brick, brick basically just really flush to an open. Right, it's yeah, no it's really right up here. Um, and if you look at it, you kind of look at it. Yeah. It's but th this is cobbling here, right? The brick cobbling. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And that's intact and everything. Not really. No. They're going to rebuild that part yeah. part of it. Yeah. We're trying. Right. Yeah. Oh. Can you um, I'm sorry. Presentation, but you have three, so it's like louvered openings below it. Yep. Used to be windows. Um. And then you, then you add. They're they're louvers currently. But all three of those are. Yeah, currently. and that's in the that's up in the attic space. Okay. Um, and we're replacing replacing the louvers in kind. And then below that, are you adding windows? Yeah. So originally, um, what was here and what's there now is a series of small windows this was horse bays up here mm -hmm. so then we have these small i guess they're horse windows for lack of a better term um we, we're going to extend those reuse the same sill and yeah. drop those down to allow more light into the space mm -hmm. but maintain the maintain the head and maintain the opening and just put a tall skinny window in there so that you're pointing to an elevation that's on the other side of the building. This the, yeah, this is the opposite. So here you can see it, and it's not the best picture. Oh, it's the same. It's the same it's side. The same. Yeah, it's just the top right corner um, picture. No, oh, okay. the, the lower is opposite of that gable that's facing the street. Correct. And has the same configuration. On the second floor. The third floor attic space is different. Yeah, okay. But we can't see those little windows on the white because uh, it's on the white. Yeah, white. I mean, if you come up, you can see it. It's, okay. it's pretty clear um, if you look at it closely. But they, you know, they're basically the, the sill height currently is about here. Mm -hmm. And we're going to bring it down to the same sill height as the, to match the other ones. I guess where I'm going with that is that I think it's nice that those windows are getting larger. We're adding a little bit. Um, more solid void happening, and I'm uh, less concerned about the gable um, having the door necessarily. I think that the in setting the brick helps um, the memory of something being there, uh, but the focus is really going to be on that, that band of windows up above, and and even the the louvered openings. Um, so I think that that has a nice balance of solid and void. And the facade personally yeah this also there's a some remnants like here's an old head uh, archway right here that's kind of remnants that's it actually stands out kind of nicely what once the building has been painted completely um, those were covered up previously by just tin sheets just nailed to boards in, in place so there's a number of kind of artifacts of previous renovations and things like that. So. And one, I guess one other thing to throw out there, people feel very strongly about that, and maybe it's a compromise with the client, is could that inset be painted a light gray or something just to sort of give the sense of mm -hmm. void, mm -hmm. rather than putting up a product that you have to go back and take care of like wood. Yeah. 
Well, that's what my suggestion is. You know, you can replicate that PVC, and since the facade is painted, you're going to paint that. It won't require any more maintenance than it would on the normal building maintenance of having to paint it every you know, 15 years, whatever they need to do. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we've worked a lot with your firm, and I really respect Tom and all you guys do, but you know, I just feel like kind of trying to cut corners here. You know, I think the function of this committee is to try to preserve a lot of the you know, articulation of the older buildings in town. And I, I frankly disagree with that kind of infill. It looks like the type of thing we can slap a piece of plywood in an opening. You know, I just don't think, you know, uh, you know, a PVC replica of that, those doors to put up there is not, you know, because the brickwork that doesn't even have to be great if it's just applied over the brickwork. You know, it doesn't, and it, since it's a painted as masonry anyway, it's not too much of an issue. But you know, the combination of changing that and that, um, you know, the, the roof on that, I, I just, I'm frankly opposed to that, you know, and I think we should encourage the owners to bring it back to closer to uh, the original detailing. Any comments on the cable and detail? Well, I agree that that was a door of some sort, and I think that Anything that uh, reflects that, I think it's good. I think knowing that it's a horse barn, you've got the horse windows enhancing those, uh, I think is a good idea, but still the um, uh, dimensions, the articulation, the patterning of that uh, really says, hey, this is a horse barn. This is a historic thing in downtown Northampton. And just to do something up there at that opening, um, like a plastic barn door, <laughs> Uh, bolted on there, um, I, I think that would, to me, that would just rescue some of the character along with the um, step gable on the other part. Um, so I'm sort of in your camp on that. I agree. I agree. Okay. I, plus, I think it's just going to add to the, the whole charm of the, of the brewery as well, you know? I don't have any issues with the tank Top of I mean, that's not a mechanical issue, and you know, that can come and go in the future depending on right. systems. So, any other comments on the barn door? Mm -hmm. Any other comments on the mechanical equipment on the roof? Um, let's start with the parapet question. Uh, I, yeah. um, the, the way the way your plan is, you're not planning to the straight line there. You're not planning to corbel the bricks on that. You're going to do something they're, else. On they're that. not corbel, so we're just going to add. Here's a detail here. So we have a uh, two board fascia, uh, which creates a shadow line, a couple uh, of shadow lines. But I, there's no. To me, I, there. one one thought that I have is. Um, if the bricks on the top there were corbel, so that it would give it some articulate, you don't like that idea. No, I just think it, they poured a concrete beam there. You can't so really. You can't, I mean, it's I not guess practical. You could corbel on top of that, but mm -hmm. right. it's very we'll difficult forget, to right. attach so I'm not, to that. That's point. not my expertise, so I'll, I'll, I'll withdraw that. Well, there wasn't a corbel there to begin with. I know. I mean, that's sort of what we were thinking was that it was a very minimal. Right. Um, Parapet and coping across the top. And, and so right now, how much concrete beam shows above? And so the beam is now pitched with the roof, correct? Correct. Yeah. And how thick, how much exposed on the face? How much concrete is exposed? Uh, in the well, we're going to drop. I don't have that exact dimension, but uh, we're dropping a fascia board down in front of it. So that it's, uh, I would guess, uh, three courses. So say eight inches at the top of the bricks. And then there's two fascia boards, so you'll have one, two, three shadow lines right. across the top of that. Was there a, a st some sort of shadow or fascia prior to that? On, on Not really. The original? It no. was just a cap? Yeah. Right the brick. It was yeah. very minimal. Well, I still disagree with the pitch on it, and I think it would be stepped even with that shadow detail. Yeah, it's shallow board detail. Okay, then you just run into the working out the details of the steps. So yeah. the, the 
the shadow boards don't collide in front of the rocks. So the parapet so. hasn't been built yet. It's only the repair to the top of the, the beam is basically yeah. Yeah. we put the beam right foundation. Um, and with the existing variety of brickwork on the wall as it stands already, repairs over the years and things, lack thereof. Um, it's not a super crisp wall that's being painted. It's got a lot of movement, a lot of character um, behind the paint. So I think this is gonna blend in really well um, once it's all painted the same color. If you left it pitched the way it is, or if you stepped it? Either way. Yeah. I would really, I strongly prefer it to stepping in the corners. Can I get a, a, just an informal vote on whether you would like to see the parapet stepped? Oh, yes. Yes. I, I could go either way on it. But it's, I'm, I'm happy to vote with everybody else. I, I, you should probably just go ahead and make a motion. Okay. All right. Thank you. Um, I'm going to vote yes. It, it sounds like we're okay with the mechanical equipment as it is. And um, do the majority feel that there should be more detail to the gable and barn door? Yes. Okay. So can I get a motion from somebody on all three of those elements? I'd sort of like, we should vote them in independently. Let's, okay. you know, just that way we, we can pay each if they have to come back to us, they can keep each them separately and they can move ahead with other parts. So can can I just say, can we plan to, if you vote for us to replace it in kind, we would replicate what's there and not have to come back again to present the detailing of that? Is that, that makes sense. how it could work? No. You know, happy to furnish evidence or, you know. No. But um, well, does that make sense or no? Yeah, but you can't. <coughs> You're not really replacing that uh, cornice in kind because it's a different detail. You're going to need to put the stepped fascia on there, which is not on the original building. So you're not really reproducing the original detail. Well, there's going to be a coping cap at each step, right? Right. Like but does, to do that, they're adding, if you look at the detail, they're adding a stepped fascia that covers. <laughs> the concrete beam. I'm just saying what he said is not true. You're not replacing it in kind. Mm -hmm. You're not replicating it. You are making a small change mm -hmm. to the detail. Mm -hmm. Which I don't have a problem with. I'm just saying in terms of mm -hmm. language, we should get it correct. Mm -hmm. So I, you want me to make a motion? On a fair picture? Yes. <laughs> Well, let's, we can just not vote all three separate motions. Is, mm -hmm. is that okay in terms yeah, of committee? Absolutely. That way, you know, it's like the, the roof mechanicals are a done deal. Mm -hmm. I think that the cornice should be Here rebuilt now. with the three steps as it was existing, allowing the stepped fascia at each section uh, to be used to cover up the concrete beam that is now showing mm -hmm. and I think that would be acceptable. I, I don't know if I'm articulating that well enough, That's but right. um, second. Okay. Uh, all in favor? Aye. One down. One down. <laughs> uh, thank you, opposed. <laughs> Could I ask one favor that you just supply a little detailed drawing where the steps occur? Sure. So we can see how the the shadow boards work. Because mm -hmm. you just send it up to a bunch of carpenters and it may not come out the way you want, unless you give them a picture. In lieu of having to come before the committee, is it acceptable to have the chair review the drawing? Absolutely. Okay. And we can do that by email. Mm -hmm. um, can I get a motion on the barn door recess? So that's the thing at the top of the, the, the peak of the... The gable end. Here. Yep. Right. Well, I would make the motion that the uh, masonry opening up there um, 
be finished with some sort of replica of the uh, wood door that's there now in a modern material, uh, maintenance screen material. I second. No, a replication yeah. of it. All in favor? Does that make sense to you? That I didn't, is that something that's doable? It's to have yeah. that instead of It's the doable. Yeah, it's not preferred, but it's doable. All, right. All in favor? Any opposed? And the last item, can I get a motion on uh, accepting the mechanical unit as presented? I'll make a motion and we accept the changes as shown. I'll get a second. All in favor? Unanimous on that one. <laughs> I thought that was going to be the hard one. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you never know. The question is when the brewery's gone, you're just going to rip it out. <laughs> yeah. Right. Are you using a sign panel yeah. someplace, or how is this going to be identified? The, the tenant has, uh, I understand, um, permitted their signs separately. Okay. Just be curious of where it would be. Yeah, there's like a sandwich board, I noticed, that went up today, right here above the door. It's pretty minor. And then somewhere along this wall, there's a big, bigger sign, but I haven't seen that. Is it a brew pub? So it's a brewery and tasting room. So they um, they don't have like a fry away or food's not really their thing, but they'll have um, nachos and like maybe sandwiches and stuff like that. Yeah, that's what it started with. Then he decided he was going to do a restaurant, and now he's back to the other. So the beer is very good. I highly recommend they're open up tomorrow. Are there already room there? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So when does the whole project scope? slave to be completed you think? Um, well I think he's get, getting his final inspection on the brewery and brew and tap room tomorrow. So even though the exterior facade works to him, he's fine. Yeah, right so this piece of the facade will probably get pushed off till next spring, the repairs up here. Um, and then the second floor, um, the tenant, it's office tenant that's going in up there probably in the spring as well. What's the function of the first floor in the front there, on the, in the gables end? That's the tap room. Oh, that's part of the whole. Yep. That they got this the whole is tap floor. room, and then this is um, yeah, the brew house. Yeah. Did you know when they? You know, I just realized when you talked about the horse windows. They originally did like horses like stick their heads out of there. I <laughs> saw. <Yeah>, so. <laughs> Can you stop yeah. looking up and see some heads? Yeah. yeah. I mean, on the yeah. second floor too. I guess they came up from the uh, railroad bed. You don't yeah. remember that. <laughs> I was only like five years old. Uh, if you ever want to hear about it, talk to Tony or Dan Gleason. We've got some great stories. <laughs> So yeah, they, they okay. happen to lift a, a freight elevator. Oh. They, there was one. It's gone. Oh wow. We're gonna let him go. He's, he's. <laughs> here. Thank you for coming. My <laughs> pleasure. Thank you all. Thanks, Anna. Close that section of the meeting. Yeah. Okay. So um, we have some meeting minutes that came out. I guess I'll go through them one by one and just get approval that they are correct as recorded. Um, on June 5th, um, there was the window replacement at Thorns. Can I get a motion to approve those minutes? I make the motion to move. <laughs> second. All in favor? Um, on July 17th, uh, there was a meeting um, to review the addition of the elevator and second floor expansion of 60 C Sonic Street. This is one that was just um, pulled back. Uh, can I get a motion to approve the phase? As you read them? No, no, no. I, 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 I read them already, but I just was trying to find them. I'm mm -hmm. <laughs> looking at them right there. No, I, I, I make the motion to, to approve the. Who said that? Can I get a second on that? Second. All in favor. Uh, August 7th, um, there was a meeting to review. 
the facade changes to lease and camping store. Um, I get a motion to approve those minutes. I'll make a motion to approve the minutes. I'll like to second that. A second. All in favor? Aye. And on um, October 2nd, this was the review um, to blend the existing central business architecture design guidelines into form based coding for public infrastructure. And um, I get someone to approve those. Mm -hmm. I make a motion to approve those minutes. Mm -hmm. I second. I second. Second. Okay, all in favor? Yeah, I think that's it. Yes? Yes. Okay. Can I get a, is there any other business? I don't have any more. Can I get a motion to close the meeting? So moved. Okay. A second. All in favor? Aye. 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 A